Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and my vermi bag tote that is suspended within this bus box. It's due for a feeding today. It's been 11 days since we checked in on it. The stuff they got was stuff like salad, like, you know, lettuce head, the, the butt end of a head of lettuce, a bunch of other lettuce related bits and pieces of um, kitchen scraps. They got some worm chow in here too, I believe, but those all stuff that I think after 11 days, I would have to imagine that it's probably gone or close to being gone. So I've um, I've got some coffee I want to get rid of. And man, look at all that carnage. All this diatomaceous earth I sprinkled out here appears to have done a good job creating little puddles of dead flying insects. Well, let's get this thing up onto the bench. We'll be able to get a better look at it there. Well, it looks like we've got ourselves a little guardian. The spiders camped out in here. Oh, he's just going to run away. I was going to just put him over on the shelf so he can get situated maybe in another system. Actually, he went under the, the box. Maybe he'll be there when we're finished. And I will have by then forgotten completely and I'll be a little bit startled. <laughs> so this is very reminiscent of what we did last time. We had left the system with... A, a Kind of a dusting of this diatomaceous earth on the top layer and then we collected up a big pile of dead gnats dead flying insects see we've also kind of spilled a bunch of living ones into the pile of dead ones along with the diatomaceous earth and it's certainly not a lot of material you know maybe a teaspoon's worth if, if that of diatomaceous earth sprinkled across the entire top surface doesn't, doesn't appear to have completely solved the insect situation in here, but, um, well, whatever. It's, it's an attempt, but still, it does feel to me like there's a lot more um, that could be done to get rid of insects, you know? I'm going to do the same as I did last time. Last time, I simply dumped off the, the carnage right into the same exact spot. That's where we had dumped it last time, too, and then... What we did last time was we actually covered it up, buried all the dead flying insects. I guess we buried a bunch of living ones too, but at this point, none of these insects covered in diatomaceous earth are ever going to fly again or anything like that. The one thing I remember from the last video, I screened it in preparation for coming down here to feed today. I, um, I did notice that the only place we did any digging was over in this corner just to submerge this pile of <laughs> carnage and then down the middle to add the food so we never really got a chance to inspect the outer reaches of the the system last time and last time too i think it had been a couple weeks so you know 11 days now and maybe 14 days or something like that and i don't even know if that previous time we'd done any ins such inspections so i think we're going to do a little bit of extra probing around here today see how this bin's holding out and then we'll feed so this is like a plum pit and put that off to the side. Stuff like that doesn't really help <laughs> in the bins. All right, so like the last feeding, you know, like I said, there was a head of lettuce, and you know, 11 days. So it's, uh, it's very likely that it's gone. Right next to the head of, head of lettuce was a paper towel, kind of a frozen, clumped up one. So I couldn't really spread it out. It was just in a, you know. A mound frozen as like a brick of ice so at least today we can spread that stuff out a little bit use it as supplemental bedding with our feeding today I don't know, where's the, uh... I mean of all the things that were placed in here the the butt end of the head of lettuce was by far the largest object everything else was just leaves of lettuce and stuff like that so I thought if we found leftovers of anything, it would be of that, but I don't see any, so not too surprising. Let's um, let's inspect this side just so that'll give us a chance to also at the same time <laughs> bury bury this pile of diatomaceous earth slash gnats. Yeah, this material's really nice. I figured maybe this way I can open up the hole immediately, and right into it can go the the victims of the diatomaceous earth. This material, I think, is 
getting close to being ready for just like, you know, letting the worms plow through it and sort of forage for a while within it without any fresh food being applied or minimal amounts just so that they can actually start breaking down some of the remaining lingering bits of leftover food and bedding in here probably mostly bedding I'm also wondering if a little bit of drying in here might also help when I first started probing down into this the moisture seemed extremely high but as soon as you start handling the stuff and it crumbles effortlessly it's you don't feel as concerned anymore about the high moisture level but the high moisture level also seems to give little leftover scraps of bedding and food little places to hide um, where the worms can't get at if it's like piled up inside of a little ball of casting so I don't know I've been wondering if I should be running my systems a little bit drier just to prevent that clumping from occurring although I gotta admit it's not happening too badly in here it's just a uh, some signs of it, you know. All right, you know what? Let's get this pile <laughs> of powder slash dead insects down into this hole. I can see uh, cocoons. I don't know if they're visible on the camera. I thought I might be able to grab that one that was right in front of me, but it sort of slipped down into a crack, and maybe we'll bump into it again later. And here, too. I don't know if I'm unearthing bits and pieces of food scraps. In the end, who knows, I could be littering the entire top surface of this um, material with leftover bits of food and stuff. Eh, it doesn't matter. We're covering up pretty thoroughly. And whatever, I guess if what we're trying to avoid is bugs coming into the system, we we're, already situ we're already in that situation. So, uh, I guess, yeah, what, what's, what's the purpose in making a bad situation worse, right? So, it's not what I'm after, but still... All right, here, a lot of moisture. This is, I guess, you know what, i got to admit, you know, you put a bunch of frozen lettuce leaves and stuff like that down into a worm bin. As that stuff thaws, it's going to release a bunch of its moisture. So I think the, the high moisture content I was observing was really more related to the feeding area. Because what we saw out that way was not nearly as um, damp and clumpy. And well, you know, right down where you're feeding, that's kind of what you're going to expect to see. Kind of damp and clumpy, especially if they've eaten most of the food and the only thing remaining is their poop. <laughs> that appears to be almost like what we're seeing here. This is funny too. I guess I remember seeing this um, strand of something last time we were in here. I kind of assumed it might break down, but 11 days later for it to still look like this, I'm wondering if this is also in that category of stuff to be pulled out kind of like the um kind of like that plum pit i removed earlier i don't know usually i'm not that particular but something that you bump into repeatedly that just gives you that vibe like it's not going anywhere seems sensible to get rid of it all right I think this is helping all this damp stuff that was down low getting uh, aerated and getting moved to the surface. I think it's probably going to help this stuff air out and dry off a little bit, which would be kind of nice. The stuff they're getting today is coffee, some of which just came out of the the brewer. So it just had wa you know scalding water passing through it a few minutes ago. In fact, it's still a little bit warm, but. I don't know if I classify used coffee as being much of a moisture source. Yeah, it's damp, but it um, it just seems like it's super close to already being dry, too, at the same time. <laughs> the Schrodinger's coffee. Yeah. All right, this stuff on this side, similar to what we saw on the other side. Nice and crumbly, not quite as damp. Good number of worms hanging out in it. So... I think we've satisfied my curiosity of how the outskirts of this bin are doing. We've aerated everything, you know, we've tilled up anything that um, might have been sort of encapsulated in a more compacted clump. Hopefully we've released some bits and pieces of food and bedding that can maybe now get worked on by the worms. Stuff that might have otherwise just remained sort of encapsulated in a pile of castings. This. I think, yeah, you know what? 
right away I was suspicious by, by looking at it, but as soon as I got to the little stem part of it, I think this is the outer skin of a kiwi. And this goes way back. <laughs> and it's something that you would imagine, you know, would get broken down pretty quick, but for whatever reason, it's holding out together. And maybe there again, maybe it was just caught up in a clump of castings and just wasn't really accessible to worm traffic. So that's kind of the reason I sometimes wonder if slightly drier, more crumbly material that doesn't give anything a chance to hide would be just a little bit better, maybe. Here's more strands of stuff, but I think that this is actually celery or some sort of food, so that's going to go. But that other strand of something that we saw before, I don't believe that that's organic, so hopefully we're removing the right stuff and leaving the right other right things behind. This sort of seems to have the same length and same texture and everything. I don't know. I think I'm getting rid, getting rid of it. Just annoying to keep bumping into something weird like that. I don't know why. Little nuisance object. All right, man, we've really indulged our curiosity in this system, haven't we? <laughs> Spent a lot of time probing around. The system's now 170 days old, and today it's receiving its 17th feeding. So easy numbers for me to remember. I didn't have to come down here with any notes. And there's really nothing special about how we're feeding or what we're doing in this bin. I guess the novelty is just the fact that it's a slightly different container than what I usually use. You know, this vermi bag tote. When I first got the vermi bag tote, I built a wooden frame for it and I suspended it in the air and it was extremely well ventilated. And then I decided I would run it in a, a box, you know, more uh, aligned with, I think, the way it was meant to be run considering its name, you know, I mean, the naming even includes the, um, you know, the corresponding container that this thing is supposed to sit in, <laughs> vermi bag tote. So yeah, it's not a tote, it's a bus box, but it's pretty much the same thing. All right. So let's see, I've got, um, let's see, I've got this piece of soiled napkin, and there was these other little bits of soiled napkin from previous feedings that we were able to salvage and try to spread out a little bit, but I thought I thought we'd find more but whatever it's good it's better than nothing and then each of these coffee filters as we come in with this coffee these coffee filters can be left here as well for these little guys to work on and you know maybe we'll try to instate a little bit of tradition in this system too for whatever reason I've not been using a feeding zone indicator and I think we'll just use one of our old coffee filters to indicate where we last fed. And that's really just sort of a, a surface covering just to indicate that, hey, this is where the food was last placed. All right, so the coffee blended with the worm chow, I've got a feeling is gonna be a pretty popular mix. The worm chow in this particular version is uh, ground up seeds and grains. And you know what? We've got that other coffee filter coming in. I got a feeling that these little guys are probably craving um, bedding. There's probably not a whole lot of it in this system, so you know, all this nitrogen rich food and coffee and seeds and grains and all that stuff, I would think they're probably also craving carbon supplement to their food and their diet. So I think the little paper in there probably can't hurt. Because all these things, I'm not sure if these are potato peels or if they're paper bits of shredded newspaper or cardboard or something. But I did feed potatoes in here recently, so it could just be the skins of a whole bunch of potatoes. And that's probably what it is. Leftovers from one of the, our previous feedings. So, another layer. Yeah, this is a good, good bit of food. When I was holding both of these, they had some good weight to it. And i got to admit, it is mostly just... The weight of the moisture if the stuff was dry it would probably weigh half as much but i hardly count that as you know moisture being added or a moisture source for the bin for some reason i don't know to me the coffee going in is uh, almost seems practically dry all right very nice feeding for these little guys i hope they like it i'm wondering if maybe just a little bit more chow you know if you think about it there's a lot of a lot of food going in here all of a sudden, you know. 
we dug a pretty good size hole and threw in a few pieces of paper and whatnot but for the most part it's food and not the kind of food that's going to waft off all kinds of delicious odors like if like if it was a pile of fruits or something it's pretty um boring smelling food maybe it'll reduce the interest of the passerby insects to all want to come in here and explore although sometimes i really wonder is it really the food they're after or is it the moisture and there again it takes me back to possibly wanting to see this system dry off a little bit perhaps we can replace the plastic covering in such a way that it's not quite so thorough as it's been in the past and just begin letting the system lose some of its moisture to evaporation around the edges. If some of this stuff dries out, it's already pretty much castings anymore. So it might become a little bit tough. But that's okay. It'll crumble again someday. Alright. A little crumbly. Not not crumbly, a little clumpy bits. I always feel like I want to try to break apart. And, you know, we put the plastic covering on. There's going to be a good bit of moisture floating around up here in the bin. But around the edges, I think it might be time to start letting things air out a little bit. So let's put this plastic back on in such a way that it doesn't go edge to edge quite the way it did when we first put it out here on the uh, bench. What we could do is kind of pull back from the edges a little bit. Give all this material a little bit of air. Let the stuff start drying. And where is my... Ah, here it is. Got my little diatomaceous earth applicator. <laughs> oh my goodness. The stuff is just flowing out. I think the way I actually applicated it was through the bottom side. That's not even supposed to be really open. But the little bit that sneaks out there seems to give me a little bit better control applicating it. So I know I'm not solving the problem here with getting rid of the insects. One of these days I'm going to grab that package of BTI <laughs> mosquito dunks that I've got upstairs in the kitchen and actually bring it down here and make some stuff that I could treat my uh, systems with. I think that would actually help solve the problem. Little tiny worm here, my goodness. This little guy could have easily gotten stranded out here. So let's just get them back into a safer spot and and then we're almost done. I've got a few things I've got to clean up and put away, but I'm not going to waste your time with that. That's boring. Before I go, though, let me really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. If you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.